Greetings Internet, Ken here from the Computer Clan, and today we're going to talk about iOS 11, which has a slew of new features, especially for iPad users. So let's dive right in to some of the new multitasking features first, because I think a lot of people are focusing on these. What you might notice right away is a brand new dock that can hold way more than just six icons. But it does more than just hold more icons. It can be summoned within other applications for easy app switching. Apps can also be dragged out of the dock for split screen. Slide over is also supported where an app can appear in a floating window. As you can see, it's just a little buggy, but hey, it's a public beta. The app switcher has also been redesigned. And with the app switcher comes a new control center. It features an all new design along with some new long press menus. It is also a lot more customizable than the previous version. The control center also hosts a shortcut for screen recording, which is now built in natively to the system. Also, the Photos app has a new status indicator that is more specific about what it's doing, and it includes a pause and resume button. Along with the new multitasking features, drag and drop is now supported within the system. Safari has some new convenient shortcuts like a two finger tap to open up a link in a new tab, and you can also drag links to the side of the screen to do split screen browsing with a new gesture. The media player has also been redesigned with 15 second skip buttons and an unintrusive volume slider. iOS 11 gives you the ability to store messages in the cloud so conversations sync better and message data is offloaded automatically, freeing up space. The updated keyboard has new flick shortcuts to access characters like numbers, and the Notes app can now support tables and features a new popover interface for styling and aligning. The Notes app also features a document scanner, which uses the device's camera to take a picture of a piece of paper and format it to make it look like a scanned document. Well, this maybe isn't the most important business document you've ever seen, but you get the idea. The gesture to access the notification center now goes to your lock screen. I'm guessing this is an effort to combine the experiences of both features into one interface. Speaking of interfaces, Apple is starting to kind of streamline everything with this look that was debuted with Apple Music. This is the new redesigned App Store, for example. There's also some additional features for Apple Pencil, such as additional markup capabilities and a quick pencil tap shortcut on the screen to instantly open the Notes app. Siri's intelligence is being expanded throughout the system. It can now act as your more personal DJ with Apple Music, it can translate words into other languages, and you can even use type to Siri instead of using your voice. Some other iOS 11 features include a Files app for file browsing, Lane Guidance and Maps, Apple Pay inside of Messages, AirPlay 2 protocol with multi-speaker support, and a do not disturb mode while driving. If your phone detects that you're driving, it can halt notifications and keep you safer on the road. In addition, there's probably thousands of new APIs for developers, so let's go through them. Number one, okay, just kidding, I won't actually go through all a thousand, but some of the big ones are AR Kit, which helps developers implement augmented reality into their apps, Core ML, which is all about machine learning, and HEVC, which is high efficiency video coding, which helps videos compress at about half the file size but maintaining the same quality. So there you have it, a quick tour of iOS 11 beta.